Assalamualaikum and good day everyone. I am Madam Nurul Huda Musa and on this video I'm going to explain on pyruvate oxidation and citric acid cycle. So we are moving to topic 4 in this chapter and at the end of the lesson uh, students should be able to achieve learning outcome number 3 which is to describe pyruvate oxidation and citric acid cycle. So we start with pyruvate oxidation. As we have learned previously in glycolysis, one molecule of glucose break down into two molecules of a pyruvate. And this happen in the cytosol. Okay? And the remaining process of cellular respirations occur inside the mitochondrion. Okay? And that's require this molecule of a pyruvate. Okay? It needs to be transported into the mitochondria via this transport protein okay so this process also called as a link reaction because it link process of glycolysis to citric acid cycles and uh, some of the book also mentioned uh, this process of formations of acetyl coenzyme a so there are three process in the pyruvate oxidation okay so number one here the pyruvate has now entered the mitochondria and the pyruvate okay, undergo process of decarboxylation okay, undergo process of decarboxylation which is a removing of this carboxyl group okay, and release as carbon dioxide okay so the process we known as a decarboxylation it's removing of carboxyl group and given off as a molecules of carbon dioxide Okay, so now the pyruvate, which is initially a uh, three carbon. Okay, so initially the three carbon molecules. So now remove the carbon dioxide and form two carbon molecules. Okay, so these two carbon fragments oxidized, which means it's lost the electron, and this electron gained by NAD plus and reducing this NAD plus to NADH. Okay, with uh, hydrogen and that will form the acetate okay so remaining two carbon fragment oxidized forming this acetate which is two carbon so acetate then receive coenzyme a this one coenzyme a and form acetyl coa okay so basically the process of pyruvate oxidation is transformations of pyruvate uh, three carbon molecules into acetyl CoA, which is two carbon molecule, and through the process, it releases off carbon dioxide as a byproduct and producing NADH as a product. Okay, so now these acetyl CoA are ready to enter into the next citric acid cycle. Now let's look at citric acid cycle. It's also known as tricarboxylic acid or Krebs cycle, honoring the scientists who work out the pathway Sir Hans Adolf Krebs. So this process takes place in mitochondrial matrix, which is the inner side of a mitochondria. So you can see as a blue spaces here, and it enclosed by the inner membrane. There are eight steps in citric acid cycle and each catalyzed by enzyme. So at the end of a cycle, it generates one ATP, three and ADH, one FADH2, and carbon dioxide would be released as a byproduct. And this diagram show the whole process of citric acid cycle. So there are eight steps all together and the colored substance here are the product. Okay, so we have one, two, three and ADH produce one FADH2 and one ATP. So from this cycle, okay, for every turn of a cycle, two carbon from acetyl-CoA enter the cycle. So it marked by the red color carbon here. So these enter the cycle and two different carbons that mark by the blue here are going to leave the cycle in form of carbon dioxide okay in step three and four 
So basically, this cycle, acetyl-CoA join the cycle by combined with oxaloacetate, forming the citrate. And the whole, uh, the next seventh step is to decompose citrate back to oxaloacetate. Thus, the regenerations of a oxaloacetate make this process as a cycle. Now let's look at the cycle in more detail. In the first step, acetyl-CoA, which is product from pyruvate oxidation, join the cycle by combining with oxaloacetate and forming citrate. Okay, and through the process, coenzyme A has been removed. So acetyl-CoA, which is two carbon molecule bind with four carbon oxaloacetate, forming six carbon citrate. The citrate is the ionized form of citric acid. Hence, we know that the name citric acid cycle refer to the first product that being produced yeah, in this cycle, which is citric acid. In the second step, citrate is converted to its isomer, isocitrate. So hence, the name isocitrate here because this isocitrate is isomer to the citrate. Okay, and in this process, one water molecule remove okay, through process of dehydration. Okay, and additions another water molecule through process of rehydration. Okay, and through this process, so you can see this hydroxyl group has been removed to another carbon. Okay, so that's why it's a isomer for a citrate because they have the same uh, formula but different arrangement of atom because this OH has been changed. Okay, on third step, isocitrate is oxidized, means it loses the electron, and this electron accepted by NAD plus and reduce NAD plus to NADH and hydrogen ion and the resulting compound here we are going to lose this carboxyl group the middle carboxyl group here and release as carbon dioxide and through the process of decarboxylation okay so remember this co2 are going to leave the cycle as carbon dioxide so in step three here it involves two process so number one formations of nadh and release carbon dioxide, thus the isocitrate forming alpha ketoglutarate. On fourth step, alpha ketoglutarate loses another carboxyl group, the N carboxyl group here, and release of as carbon dioxide. Okay, in through the process of decarboxylation, and the resulting compound is oxidized means it loses the electron and accepted by NAD plus and forming an ADH and hydrogen ion. Okay, and then the remaining molecules yeah, after the oxidation, the remaining molecule then attached to coenzyme A forming succinyl CoA. So in step four here, it involves four processes, release carbon dioxide, formations of NADH and uh, attachment with coenzyme A. So now we move to step number five from succinyl CoA to succinate. In this process, coenzyme A here is removed and displaced by phosphate group denoted as a PI here in organic phosphate. So inorganic phosphates are going to bind temporarily before being transferred to GDP, which is guanosine diphosphate. So guanosine diphosphate here having two phosphate combined with another phosphate group here now forming GTP, guanosine triphosphate. So guanosine triphosphate having three phosphate, GTP. And it's going to give off one phosphate to ADP, forming ATP, which is adenosine 
triphosphate having a three phosphate group. GDP, they have similar function as the ATP and having equal energy as the ATP. And this process we call as a substrate level phosphorylation and because of the formations of ATP is by conversion from high energy substrate. So now after removing coenzyme A and displaced by inorganic phosphate um, forming GTP and then remove one phosphate and forming the ATP okay, and the succinyl CoA transformed to succinate in step number five. Next in step number six here from succinate, two hydrogen atom are transferred, okay, lose two hydrogen atom and these two hydrogen atom transferred to FAD now forming FADH2. So we can see here remove one hydrogen okay, and that result in the formations of a double bond between these two carbon. Okay. But of course, we are wondering yeah, why this time the electron is accepted by the FAD because previously it is accepted by the NAD+. So this is because the energy that contained in the electron is insufficient to reduce NAD+. So thus it gives off to FAD and the succinate forming the fumarate in step number 6. So now we move to step number seven. Okay, from fumarate, additions of a water molecules are going to rearrange the bond in this substrate. Okay. So add water, that's going to split water into hydroxyl and hydrogen, and that's are going to react with these two carbon and break this double bond, forming the single bond. And we can see here the hydroxyl and additions of another hydrogen in this carbon okay and in this process uh, step number seven here process of uh, hydrolysis and additions of a water here change uh, transform the fumarate to malate okay now moving to the final step step number eight malates are then going to be oxidized okay and it's going to lose uh, these two hydrogen and removing the electron accepted by NAD plus and reduce NAD plus to NADH and hydrogen ion. Okay, and then regenerating again the oxaloacetate with four carbon. Okay, so now the end product here, oxaloacetate, is ready to bind to other acetyl CoA and continue the cycle again. So now let's summarize the cycle. Citric acid cycle function as a metabolic furnace that further oxidize organic fuel from pyruvate and the chemical energy is transferred to NAD plus and FAD during redox reaction and the reduced coenzyme NADH and FADH2 are then shuttle the high energy electron to electron transport that will be covered in the next video. So to summarize the product from pyruvate oxidation and citric acid cycle, from one molecule of a glucose, break down into two molecules of a pyruvate in the process of a glycolysis. So six carbon glucose break down into two molecules of a pyruvate which is three carbon molecules. The pyruvate will then undergo process of pyruvate oxidation producing acetyl CoA and during the process one and ADH produce for every pyruvate turning into acetyl CoA. So now acetyl CoA then enters citric acid cycle and for every acetyl CoA that produce three and ADH, one FADH2 and one ATP. But if we take from one molecule of a glucose that produce two acetyl CoA okay, in the citric acid cycle. In total, one molecule of a glucose would produce six NADH, two FADH2, and two ATP. Okay, in the citric acid cycle only from one molecule of a glucose. So in total, taking together the two process of a pyruvate oxidation and citric acid cycle, that produce total of eight NADH. 
two FADH2 and two ATP. Okay, so that is a total for pyruvate oxidation and also citric acid cycle. Okay, and in the next video, we are going to look at uh, how the oxidative phosphorylation relation are going to utilize this NADH and also FADH2 okay, utilized by oxidative phosphorylation to make the most number of ATP in the cellular respiration. So I think that's all for this video.